Okay. So they are about to film another scene. It's probably gonna be shooting and stuff. Oh, sorry. Okay. Flash is off. Thanks. They're about to do another scene. Alright, guys, go again. Let's go with the pod. Here we go. It's Ready? live. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the mother. Quiet on the set. This is a clip of the so-called gunman man getting out the van. <laughs> I mean, who does that? If they if you're gonna rob or go into a establishment, who does that? Who just leaves the car door open yes. like that, man? No lookout, man. No nothing. <laughs> Just bad acting all together. And look at that, there's a Jake right there. I don't know if he's a part of it or what, but there's there's a couple of Jakes right there next to the liquor store just sitting out there watching the whole thing go down. I'm gonna I'm play it from the top one more time. Look at that, Jake stayed. If that's a sincere Jake, who knows? Or if that Jake was a part of it, he wasn't scared at all, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Jake just sat there doing the whole thing. I don't know if he's asleep or what. You can't really see with the, the pole there. The crosswalk yellow pole right there in the face. But that's it, man. At this point, we're on Wilkinson Avenue and Ocean Avenue. Give you a perspective of where we are. We're about a block away from where the shooting was going on. A block in that direction and then to my left. That is where the shooting happened. Um, when we first arrived, which was about 20, 25 minutes ago, it literally sounded like a war zone. It was, to be quite honest, it was frightening to be driving into this area. and. As we were driving, we saw uh, police vehicles, unmarked vehicles, flashing lights, sirens going. It was just surreal, to be quite honest, almost like a scene out of a movie. Just surreal, to be quite honest, almost like a scene out of a movie. It's surreal, to be quite honest, almost like a scene out of a movie. When we first arrived. Um, we're not at liberty to disclose the names of any of the victims or the actors at this point. Um, we're not at liberty to disclose the names of any of the victims or the actors at this point. Um, we're not at liberty to disclose the names of any of the victims or the actors at this point. 
Um, that's New Jersey law on how the investigation. The Jersey City Department of Public Safety's Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security conducted a multidiscipline active shooter exercise at the New Jersey City University School of Business located at the Mac Cali Harborside Complex earlier today. The press were allowed to film inside as the drama unfolded, which seemed at some points like a real life drama as gunshots were fired and different police forces from Homeland Security and Jersey City Police Department rushed to the scene to try to apprehend the shooter alive or to shoot him outright. We interviewed Jersey City Public Safety Director James Shea before the onset of the active shooter exercise. We've been doing this uh, with our outside company here uh, since 2015, and we've been steadily improving the capabilities of our units, and we've actually brought more units and more partners into it as we go and as we get better at it. Again, getting better is a relative term. We're never going to be satisfied with our response. We're going to continue trying to improve. And Director Shea, it seems like this is just part of the standard steps that the city's taking given the reality of shootings across the country. Uh, but have there been, for example, any credible threats that you're taking seriously at this point? And, and is this why this is happening today? Well, we're a huge part of the New York metropolitan area. We're a major city with a major financial district in our own, right? And we have major universities, schools, what, what have proven to be attractive targets in other cities. We're very happy that we haven't had an event like that here, but we think we'd be neglecting the city if we didn't prepare for the possibility. So we're going to continue making sure that we have the capabilities to address any threat to our taxpayers that arise. And my last question, Director Shea, uh, what, at, at the conclusion of today's events, which happened, I guess, in a couple hours now, what will you be looking for as you assess today's uh, activities? I mean, what will be most important for you in the features that you'll be reassessing? And that we recognize our mistakes and that we see where we can do better and that then the, we will use our vendor to talk to us about steps we need to improve in training before we do this again in three or four months and we see if we've incorporated the lessons learned from today and gotten better. And again, it's all about making sure that when we respond, we're doing the best we can both for our officers and our first responders and for our citizens that are depending on us. At the conclusion of today's active shooter exercise, we interviewed the vendor, Tomahawk Strategic Solutions President, Michael Biller to find out how well the city is prepared. Uh, their response time was phenomenal. I'm very impressed with all the multiple responding authorities that participated and how they conducted themselves and how they progressed. Uh, we've had the pleasure and honor to work in this city for the past three years and where they started was great, where they've come is phenomenal. Um, I'm very confident in their abilities and what they're doing and they're actually doing some very advanced uh, advanced concepts running rescue task force and they've really refined that today and that and for, for all those that uh, don't know what rescue task force it's integrating medics just uh, as though we used to do in our previous careers to ensure that while we have a response to interdict a shooter or something of those means we also have a medic or somebody who's trained to start uh, treating victims. Mark Boosinch reporting in Jersey City for Hudson County View the eye of the community.